Hello, Kent County. I'm Dr. Adam London, Director of the Kent County Health Department. I hope you're having a great summer. Unfortunately, I wish I had better news to report in terms of our numbers. Lately, we've seen our average number of cases per day rise to almost 50. A month ago, we were less than 20 new cases per day. We've seen our positivity rate more than double as well. We're over 5% at this time. About a month ago, we were around 2%. We're also seeing more and more cases with the Delta variant identified in Kent County. We had our first Delta variant case identified a few weeks ago, and now we're seeing uh, new reports almost every day of more cases of Delta variant here in Kent County. So that's all very concerning. We also expect that according to the CDC guidelines, we're gonna be moving from the moderate risk category to the substantial risk category pretty soon because of these increased numbers. Now, what that means for you is that as we enter that substantial risk category, the recommendation is wearing a facial covering again in indoor public places and outdoor places where there are large gatherings. So at this time, I do recommend if you're going inside a public place, you should be wearing a facial covering. If you're going to a large gathering outdoors, you should be doing it then as well. Couple questions that we're getting a lot of lately. Uh, the first is, why are we so concerned about this Delta variant? Well, fortunately, it doesn't appear to be much more severe than the original COVID strain that we've been dealing with for some time. The challenge for us is the Delta variant is far more contagious. The original strain of COVID, on average, an infected person was spreading that to about two other people. With the Delta variant, an infected person on average is spreading it to between five and nine people. So you can see that a case, a small cluster of cases can quickly turn into a large outbreak very quickly with that Delta variant. So that's very concerning for us. Another question we're getting a lot of recently is about vaccine breakthrough. And if vaccines are effective, why do we keep hearing about vaccinated people becoming infected? especially with the Olympics happening and some of these other sporting events, we're hearing about vaccinated athletes who are turning positive for COVID. Why is this happening? Well, it's not a surprise to any of us because as we've been saying for a long time, vaccines are not magic. They're not a force field. They're not a guarantee that a person's not going to get infected. They're risk reduction, like wearing a seatbelt or doing anything else that reduces your risk of something bad happening. And the truth is, Vaccines are highly effective risk reduction. A vaccinated person is eight times less likely to become sick with COVID than an unvaccinated person. A vaccinated person is 25 times less likely to become hospitalized or to die from COVID than an unvaccinated person. So again, while you will hear about breakthrough cases on occasion, the reality is that vaccines are effective in reducing risk substantially. Um, I, I also want to talk to you a little bit about a public health order that I'm issuing today along with my counterpart in Ottawa County regarding schools and educational settings. And it's very similar to a public health order that we had issued for the previous school year. And I want to quickly go over five requirements that we are asking, we're requiring the schools to follow during this coming school year. And the first requirement in that order is that all persons identified as a confirmed or probable COVID case are required to isolate and not come to school. The second item in the order is that household close contacts of a confirmed or probable COVID case are required to quarantine at home. And that requirement is because we have seen that COVID spreads much more effectively in a household setting than anywhere else. About 53% of people in a household are going to come down with COVID if they live with that, uh, that, that case. So we wanna make sure that those close contacts in the, in the house stay, uh, stay away from school. The third requirement is that all persons in educational settings who are a close contact during an outbreak are required to quarantine. Now, an outbreak as defined as when we have multiple people that are epidemiological linked uh, to, to a case. So we know there's a cluster happening. And in that case, we are requiring 
uh, quarantine of those close contacts. Now, a close contact uh, for situations where both the case and the exposed people are wearing masks is defined as three feet or less. A close contact in which neither the, uh, the case or, uh, and or the exposed people uh, are wearing uh, a facial covering is six feet. So this reflects the scientific reality that masks are effective in reducing the transmission of COVID and that that, that perimeter of, of, of high risk is much less uh, large when people are wearing masks. So a big incentive there for people to wear masks in that school setting. The fourth requirement is that uh, schools need to cooperate with local health department to provide the contact information for those close contacts so that we can contact the family. We can talk to them about that contact and, and discuss next steps if necessary. And the fifth item in the order is that schools must share their prevention strategies with the community. So sharing their prevention strategy on their website and in other publicly accessible areas, it's important for us and for the schools that people in the community, that school community, that they know what's expected and what that school is doing to make that environment as safe as possible. And this is all very important for us because like the schools, we have a, a shared objective here to make sure that kids get a great education in the school year, the best education possible, and that they do it in the safest environment possible as well. We wanna make sure the kids and the staff and our community is safe as well. We also have shared the CDC and the DHHS guidance and recommendations with the schools. We support uh, that CDC and HHS guidance, and we hope that schools and the families and the kids follow that, that advice as well. Uh, those recommendations will go a long way to keeping our schools as safe as possible this coming school year. So that's all for today's report. I hope you all have a, a great, uh, great day and, uh, and are staying safe, you're staying positive, and you're staying healthy. Thank you.